What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Stro Boogie coming at you with a brand new hobby that I picked up and that's creating my own customized baits and lures. Um, as you can see from my past videos I've done some customizations to my kayak so definitely check those videos out. Um, and I still have a lot of things I want to add to it but this video specifically is about bait making. Um, I've been following the craft for a very long time since the days of Larry Dahlberg um, that may have told my age along with these gray hairs but in any way um, but one guy that motivated me to really just go ahead and dive into this game is Chris over at World's Worst Fishing shout out to Chris and um, this guy has some amazing techniques. He's done some amazing things with his baits and lures. His color patterns are just... <sighs> so I'm hoping to get there. So I'm going to take you along uh, this venture with me. I'm only three weeks in. and um, But I plan on showing you guys the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm open to all suggestions. Um there's some things that I do have some questions about and um, so yeah feel free to drop a comment for you guys that's been doing this for a long time hey, I appreciate your feedback and always like remember to like share and subscribe hit that notification bell because I will be posting videos maybe a couple of times a week so alright guys welcome to the bait shop here is my setup I told you, once I went in, I was going to go all the way in. So let's get a close-up of all the toys that I purchased. We can start with the shelves. Starting from left to right. In these jars, I have a, quite a few Dip Your Car color shifts. This stuff is really cool. And they got a variety of Lure Works colors. Some glitters. Some more glitters. I love this stuff right here, boy. I love it so much that I went on their website the other day and ordered all the colors and all the pearlescence that they had on their website. So that'll be coming in a couple of days. Some miscellaneous items. You're going to have your heat gun. I went on and bought a couple of uh, drizzle spoons. Safety first, guys. You can't be breathing this stuff in. So get you a good respirator. I'm actually going to get change these out and get the enclosed uh, filters. I also purchased a vacuum pump. And this is the, I believe this is the three quart uh, vacuum chamber. And I have the pump sitting on the floor. I also purchased this pot for my remelts along with this single burner. I went and got a bunch of Pyrex cups in various sizes. And you're going to need these guys because this is a messy business. A bag of towels. And these are all the companies I purchased these wonderful toys from. I actually got a couple of more molds on the way for, uh, for crappies. So my thinking was, well... I was, I was part of a bass fishing team for a number of years when I lived in Georgia. And this is sort of the way I approach uh, fishing for certain species of fish. <clears throat> so starting from left to right, we have the, the different types of worms. Got your swim bait. And that's a of course your swim bait to target crappies another crappie mole here 
we got another one up here this one is awesome that's for targeting trout and also wanted to get <clears throat> not only into hand injections using those pumps but also wanted to get into open pouring so I got a couple of silicone molds to practice on I actually got a hand pouring um, 7 inch curly tail uh, mold and these beautiful things came from Angling AI I love them all but this is just a work of art I went and got the I believe this is a 3.5 ecto crawl also got the 4 inch ecto crawl your uh, finesse worms and I got the 5.75 swim bait mode which just came in the other day along with the um, 4 inch ecto crawl I got the open pour um, action worm 4.1 inch and I also went and purchased this from Hobby Lobby because I knew eventually I would want to create my own lure and my own mold also purchased just a bag of eyes that I got off Amazon. They're pretty cool. Pretty cool. And the injectors. I love this thing. This triple injector makes some awesome, awesome colors. And I'll showcase that. Also have a couple of uh, six, six ounce uh, hand injectors. And I purchased some tabletop base vices, which really came in handy. You can adjust them in any direction. It's really cool. And also purchased the um, these cutting boards, which really come in handy. I'm really glad I got those. Uh, what else? Oh, you gotta have your clamps. That's my little dog all in the business. Smokey. Smokey. What's happening? What's happening? You being nosy? You trying to be a star? Everybody want to be a superstar. At any rate, got your dead on plastics down here. In a variety of different mixes. Got your swim bay float mix. Uh, your worm mix that sinks. The second worm, plastic saw. We got the uh, floating finesse. And which one is this? Uh, the swim bait. It's always good to kind of rotate your your plastic saw every day if you can, because as you can see, everything settles on the bottom. It doesn't hard pack, which is great. But yeah, you def definitely want to rotate them. And what I mean is just because you don't want to shake them up because it's going to cause air bubbles in your plastisol. So I'll, I'll do that off camera. I've already have gone through a gallon of the the worm plastisol already. So and I'm just about done with the finesse glasses saw. I didn't get the five gallon bucket but I do plan on getting those um, but I, I bought these just to kind of figure out you know formulas and which one will work best for the type of base that I'm making because some as you can see some sinks and others float and uh, so yeah that was the purpose of that. And of course, I got my batteries back there on Trinkle Charge that I hook up to my uh, kayak that controls my bow mount trolling motor, as well as a lot of the accessories on the kayak. So be on the lookout so, for that. Uh, we're going to pull out the triple injector. We're going to make one half of the bait yellow, the middle part of the bait blue. And the top part of the bait red.
All right, guys, we have um, our Plastisol cooked up. They are each roughly about uh, 320. So let's get started before the uh, Plastisol starts to settle. So we will start with start with the center color we have the blue now this is a challenge that I have and you'll see what I mean I'm just going to add a few drops and you see the way it starts bubbling that's the problem that I have with the lure works and I got it straight from Spike It. So, and see how it bubbles up like there's, like I just tossed this in some, uh, saw some water into some hot grease. And the temperature is only 250. Make sure I'm getting the. So yeah, if any of you guys out there that's been doing this for a while can uh, let me know why it's reacting this way, I would definitely appreciate it. So I'm going to get that mixed on in. And we do have some air bubbles, so I may heat this up a little bit more, throw it in the uh, vacuum chamber. Yeah, and I'm doing this kind of just eyeballing it and not really going by any set formulas and I do have some uh, formulas posted up on my wall but I wanted to freestyle okay let's see if I can zoom in some not as bad as far as the uh, the little sizzling action that was going on it's not as bad today now this stuff kind of sets up pretty quick so maybe want it a little darker just gonna add a few more drops here See how that bubbles up and it creates that layer of foam. And I don't see this particular paint color or brand of paint do this with other people that are using it. So, yeah, I want to definitely figure out why it's doing that. Maybe a little darker. starting to set up so I'm not sure if there's a lot of this stuff is pretty water based and you can see the blue texture that I have that spilled on the uh, over on a napkin paper towel see how it's bubbling got that layer of foam yeah so if any of you guys know what I'm doing wrong here let me know I've tried it under different conditions I tried using the lure works before cooking it uh, after cooking it getting the temperatures below 300 as you can see uh, getting it above 300 will definitely make it start sizzling even more so yeah, I'm not sure if it's the size and I shook it up really well before even using it so along with all the other pigments that I have 
But yeah. So I'll get this heated back up. That's about where I want the blue to s <coughs> to be set up at. So I'll stick that one in a microwave. All right, we got our temperatures right. Finally, after the uh, good and bad episode. So let's check them one more time. Loosen it up some. I got the worm oil in here. Small. Feel the pressure. <clears throat> Hold it a little bit. Top off the spoon. The second echo crawl is the four inch. The first one was the three and a half. Hold it. You feel the pressure where it stops. Top off the screw. And this is the worm finesse. Stop. Hold it. Fill in all the cavities. Top off the screw. Let's see if we got enough for the jerk baits. Hopefully you guys can see that. Jerk baits take a lot of plasticol. And I uh, stopped. Let's see. Hopefully, we have enough. Uh, check out that color. guys it is time for the reveal we have pulled out the red carpet for these boys <laughs> and uh, let's see what we got I'm gonna start with the three and a half inch ecto crawl been cleaning up and stuff so uh had this sitting for maybe about an hour uh, maybe 30 minutes but let's see what we got okay It's 
pull these on out. Take a look at the runner. Everything is even. And look at that, guys. I don't know how well you can see this in this light. But in person, this looks really nice, guys. And the thing about the triple injector, you're going to get something different every single time. Look at that. It's from the side. As you can see, the little extremities are different colors. Oh, still kind of sticky and one of the legs popped off on my finger. The good, the bad, and the ugly, y'all. Look at that. So yeah, they all technically filled in on the, uh, the extremities. Still a little sticky. But once they cure, everything will stick out for you. Look at that. Let's check that out. Oh, and this claw came out really sweet on the side. Alright, we're going to put this boy in some water to shock the plastic. Let's start the curing process. And that looks really sweet in person. Just some regular cold faucet water. And let's move on to the next one. Get this one out the way. And let's do the four inch. So crawl, you know I got everything labeled so I can know which side of the bait is the top side and vice versa. Okay, let's get rid of this so the mold can open up a little easier. It's still kind of sticky, let's see. Out. Uh oh. Actually, oh, that's the first. Came apart off the runner right in the mold. Let's check this one out, guys. Check that out. Man, I wish you could see that in person. But this. <laughs> came out really nice. It's a residue of plastic, plastic on my hands from the mold, but man, check that out. Check that out. Guys can, can see that. That looks sweet. See how the legs. Gosh, I wish my lighting was a little better. Let's see. 
Check that out. See how the legs are different colors. Got the back side. The glitter looks really nice. See how the legs are different colors. I like this triple injector. Look at that. Oh yeah. Get it from the side. Hopefully you guys can see that. Look how the claws filled in. Really nice. Drop that one in water. Let's check out the runner. Let's me know my temperatures were on point because there's no, no spillover or blending or too much bleeding. Uh, we got a little ble bit of bleeding on the back end. But as it was ejecting into the mold, this is what we we want to see. How nice is that? Let's check this out, guys. Each bait is different. Uh oh, still kind of sticky. I didn't have to put any uh, heat stabilizer in the uh, plastisol, which is really great. Man, look at that. Look at that, guys. Uh-oh. Come on, camera. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. And the one that I'm really worried about is the jerk bait. Oh, I didn't do that right. Actually, I forgot we did the worms. Let's see how they turned out. Come on. are nice oh they st still kind of wet it's been sitting up for a while I must have uh, put too much worm oil in there but man look at that look at that runner how nice is that guys how nice is that and laminated really well yeah but definitely put a little too much worm oil 
in the uh, mold. That came out really nice. Turn, uh, turn them over. That came out really nice. Come on. See the blue. Really nice. Jerk bait up. Let's see. Love the way that played together. Really nice. Okay. Pop that all out. <laughs> okay, okay. You know what though? I actually made a a boo boo with this one. The um the mold was actually upside down when I shot this. So in all actuality, I wanted the brown to be on top, the blue in the middle, and the yellow on the bottom. So this is my second time shooting this mold, and I wasn't paying attention, so this is part of the good, the bad, and the ugly. But I would still fish these. <laughs> Check that out. Still like the way it laminated. Bled over a little bit. But, um, but yeah. Definitely forgot to switch the, um, the blending block around. I should have turned it this way for this particular mold. And I even labeled it and wasn't paying attention, but that's part of the good, the bad, and the ugly. But it's still, the blend is still really nice. I'm going to shoot these again. And, um, yeah. So, yeah, this is part of the good, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know what I'm saying? Uh-uh. Yeah. I'm gonna shoot these again. And this time we're gonna pay attention to the way I actually <laughs> labeled the mold. So this part is the top. Uh-oh. And the bottom part has this hook set in the center. makes this split bottom where you can just thread your hook through and come out the top just bury your hook in the head of the bait but yeah we're gonna shoot these again Let's give this another shot
All right, guys, let's see what we got. All right, that's what we were looking for. Let's pull these boys on out. Fall them right off the sprue. Uh, didn't blend that well on the other side, but this is what we got. This is where it bled, but I would still f fish that boy. Yeah, I think my um, the blue must have been a little too hot because it bled over. Again, we're showing the good, the bad, and the ugly. So next time, when I do my remelts, I'll be sure to drop the temperatures down. I shot them at about, mm, it was probably at 340. I should have let the temperatures drop down to about, I don't know, maybe 320. Or maybe even a little lower than that, but it's not too bad. <laughs> That's not too bad. All right, we're going to head over to the curing station, aka the uh, washing machine. Drop those in that cold water. Start the curing process. I'm gonna let that soak for about 10 minutes and then lay them flat. And these are the ones we did earlier. Let's just get one final look at the finished product. Uh, thanks again. Remember, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode of Stroke Boogie's Bait Shop.